One final thing we can say about interference is the concept of diffraction gratings. And really what it comes down to is instead of combining interference and diffraction and combining the two effects together, we can ask the other question, uh, which is what happens if instead of using a double slit, we use a triple slit? Well, let's say we have more than two interfering sources. Well, what happens is we're not going to go through all the mathematical details on this, but we'll see f from some of the graphs what's going to happen. So if we use three slits instead of two, if we start with two, we get a pattern that looks like this. You know, get this oscillation back and forth in intensity. And as we move up and down, we get a maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, so on and so forth. Well, if we put a third slit in, you know, the same spacing and everything else, what's going to happen is our maximum is going to still stay in the same spot, and the minimum is actually going to form what's called a secondary maximum. So we have a primary maximum and a secondary, and we've just introduced two new ones. And the secondary is much, much lower. So if we add a four, uh, fourth slit, we can see that we get now two secondaries and still the primary, and you'll see that these things keep getting smaller and smaller. And if we go to a fifth, we add another one in here. And the maximum um, is staying in the same location, but the minimums, uh, they're getting more minimums in here and some more secondary ones. The other thing we'll notice is that up here, this separation between these, this area in the middle, um, is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. So the spot that we produce is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And this is actually a really useful thing for us. Now, we said that the maximums are getting thinner, but the intensity of the light has to still go somewhere. So what's going to happen is actually the intensity is going to change. So if we start off with really wide peaks, they're a little bit dimmer. And the more narrower peaks are, for this case, for the slits, the more slits we add, the more intense those individual peaks are going to be. So they, get, they go up and up and up. And it's kind of a cool little effect that happens. Well, we start looking into more gratings, and these gratings, as we get more and more lines in here, more and more slits, at some point, we no longer see individual slits. We see what we call gratings. And the gratings is nothing more than just a bunch of slits stacked next to each other. And the normal way we look at this is in terms of the number of slits or number of gratings per unit length. Uh, for instance, we can have a typical grading. This is actually an example of 600 grooves per millimeter. And this is a picture of the Texas Petawatt, and you'll see their, their, uh, their grading over here and over here. And these are mere gratings, they're not necessarily uh, ones that transmit, they reflect. Same idea, but they actually are 600 grooves per, mil per millimeter. So for every millimeter of distance, there are 600 or 1,600 small little grooves, small, small little slits in it. And that gives, um, you know, patterns similar to this, but just a lot more. The one thing that doesn't change, though, and this is the important part, is that the places for the maximums still remain in the same place. So d sine theta is equal to n lambda uh, for maximums, and now our d is just equal to 1 over our n. So if we want to figure out our distance, uh, our spacing between any two lines, we look at the number of lines per millimeter and invert that, and we get back to the same equation. So we're back to our maximum equation um, being related to the angle, the sine of the angle times the distance is equal to the whatever maximum for our first, second, or third maximum times lambda itself. So kind of a new little device, but really nothing too terribly new.